Rice Robinson's. It's just me today. Laz is still at work. I thought I'd take a few minutes and make a video for you guys, letting you know all the exciting stuff you can expect to see on our channel. Like I said in my last video, I am very new to this. We both are. So give us a little slack. Hang in there with us. We'll get better. Promise. I already know that the most interesting thing about me and Laz is probably going to be our marriage dynamic. I know that's what most people want to know about. In this day and age, how are we making it work? We've been together for lots of years. We've been married for 11 years and going strong. And the secret to that is, well, I guess it's not a secret no more because I'm getting ready to tell you. We have a 24-7 domestic discipline relationship. For you guys who don't know what that is, don't freak out. It's not crazy. We're not weird. It's not as odd as it seems. Give me a few minutes and I'll explain. One of my kitties, Andy, decided to join me. Say hi. Okay, back to what I was saying what a domestic discipline relationship is. Basically, let me start off by explaining the very fundamental basis. We believe in a very traditional, old-fashioned marriage setup. Um, in other words, I let him be the man. Basically, I let him lead. He is the head of our household and he makes the final decisions. And no, I'm not a doormat. My opinions get heard. We sit down, we talk about things, but the indecision is his. And so for starters, he works. I don't. I stay at home with our three kids. We also homeschool. Um, that's not really lifestyle related. That's just a personal choice for us. I take care of all of the household chores. I do the cooking, I do the cleaning. And he takes care of the outside maintenance, yard upkeep, making sure the vehicles are okay, and all those types of things. Um, this setup isn't for everybody, but it works for us. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments saying I am setting women back under the whole feminist movement and everything. And that's fine. Like I said, this isn't for everybody, but it's what we believe. Okay, so the most basic definition I can give you for what domestic discipline is, is we have a certain structure of rules and guidelines that govern how our marriage and home and family work. Our relationship, we go by what is called the four D's of domestic discipline, which are danger, dishonesty, disobedience, and disrespect. And what that basically means is, you don't do anything that puts yourself in danger. Hi, Andy. You don't be disrespectful. You don't be disobedient. And you don't be dishonest. Basic things that most relationships should have anyway. Andy is determined to be in this video with me. It's okay, though. Y'all excuse him. Okay. Outside of the basic four Ds, there are rules that come up under each category. For instance, danger. That would be don't text and drive. Um, I'm not allowed to leave the house without my phone being at least 75% or higher for obvious reasons. Um, disrespect. Basically, don't be rude. Um, don't back talk. Don't ask a whole bunch of why and how come. Um, disobedience. Basically, common sense means listen. When you're told to do something, you do it. It's very easy. Okay. And I guess you're probably thinking, what is the point of having rules, having structure as an adult? Once again, this isn't for everybody. Hi, Andy. But it works for us, and it works for a lot of other people. Believe me, lots and lots of other people. Now, along with these set rules and guidelines we have, there are also consequences for breaking these rules and guidelines. I mean, really, what are rules without consequences? They're suggestions. That's what rules without consequences are. Suggestions. So, consequences can range for many of things. It varies per couple. Um, there's no really one set way to do this. You have to adjust to what works for you. In our relationship, our consequences can range from writing lines, losing maybe social media privileges, all the way to yes, I know you're getting ready to freak out, but yes, spankings, that does happen. For me, as an adult, yes, it happens. 
Okay, I'm gonna explain how the consequences play out. For instance, line writing. Let's say you were texting and driving, even though I can let you know now, this will be way more than writing lines, but we're gonna use this as an example. You could maybe have to write, I will not text and drive a hundred times, thousand times, who knows. Uh, you might have to write a five page essay on the dangers of texting and driving. It could be anything in that type of category, but I'll still let you know now that it would not be line writing for something as serious as texting and driving. Okay, let's say loss of social media or phone privileges. That would mean no Facebook, no Instagram, no Snapchat, no phone games, no listening to music, nothing. Only use your phone for calls and texting and that would pretty much be it for however long the husband decides. Okay, and for the one that I'm sure everybody really wants to know about would be spanking. And it's exactly what you think it is. It's a spanking. It can range from being done with the hand, a belt, paddle, a switch. It really just depends on the person, the husband, what he chooses. It can be pants on, pants off, underwear on, underwear off, over the lap, standing up, bent over or something. It really just depends on what works for each couple. Um, it's not as crazy as it sounds. Like, really think about it. What is really the difference between going to work, messing up and getting a work citation or getting fired than being at home and messing up and there being some type of a consequence? I don't know who put it in everybody's minds that as an adult, certain consequences are just null and void now. Like there's a age limit. It's not. Some stuff works. It just does. And I can tell you, pain can be a very, very, very good motivator. It really can. It would be nice if I can say, yeah, we could do this without that part. And don't get me wrong, because some people do. Some people have a domestic discipline relationship and they have no physical consequences at all. And that's great if that works for them. That doesn't work for us. It doesn't work for me. I can be bratty. I can be hard headed. It's true. It, it's me. That's who I am. Um, I will listen if I want to. If I know that there are really no consequences. Basically, that, that's just me. That's my nature. So knowing that there are consequences helps me to listen. It helps me to be the wife that I am trying to be. And before everybody starts leaving me comments once again saying that this is crazy and you're oppressed and this is just another form of being abused, let me tell you, of all the hundreds of people I know in this type of relationship, 99% of them, it started from the woman bringing this up not the man. Usually, it takes a while to get most men on board with this. My husband thought I was nuts, like nuts. He thought I was crazy. Um, and when we first attempted this, yeah, it was an epic fail, believe me, epic fail on both our parts. But as time passed and we got more serious about it and we learned more about it, it became almost like a natural thing and we saw a drastic improvement. We thought we had a great relationship before this, but it has skyrocketed. There are no arguments. There are, we still disagree. I mean, everybody disagrees. There's no way around it. But because of the rules that set in place, disagreements don't turn into arguments. They can't. We're not allowed to let that happen. If you can't be disrespectful to somebody, it's very hard to argue with them, especially how most couples argue. It's almost impossible. And if it ever does get to that point, it gets corrected very quickly so it doesn't happen again. As I said before, this is definitely not a one size fit all type of lifestyle. So to give you a little bit more insight, I'm going to tell you some basics that we have um, that are our personal rules. For starters, outside of the four Ds, he wants me to always be ladylike, which in his eyes means 
I don't curse. I always sit with my legs crossed. Um, I dress appropriately. I'm not showing a lot of stuff that other people doesn't need to see. Um, we have certain household rules. Of course, the house is to be clean all the time. We have little rules that are just things that he likes, like dishes. If I don't feel like doing them that night, that's fine. But they have to be gone out the sink by the time he comes home the next day. That's a pet peeve of his. He hates dishes just sitting around in the sink. So that's a rule of mine. Um, another major rule for me is I don't tell him no about anything. And I do mean anything. No is not an option in our house. Not for me. Um, sexually, I am always to be available. Whenever, whatever. That's just how it is. And it's fine. I'm fine with it. When we first started this, we sat down and we came up with rules together. Some were just the generics from the 4Ds. Some were obvious, like the texting and driving, and then others were things that I wanted to work on personally for myself to be a better me, and then other things were his preferences. We sat down, we talked for a long time, and we agreed to all of the rules. Now, a part of what we do is considered CNC. CNC means consensual non-consent. And what that is, is once you start, and you agree that you're going to be in this lifestyle, you can't automatically be like, nope, change my mind, just because you've broken a rule and you wanna get out of being in trouble. You can decide you don't wanna do this no more, of course you can, but that will take place after whatever the consequence is for the rule that you broke. And then if y'all don't wanna do the lifestyle no more, then okay, so be it. CNC also means that I am consenting to go along with what he decides. If he thinks I've broken a rule, but I don't personally think I have, oh well, we can talk about it. But at the end of that talk, if he still believes that um, some sort of consequence or discipline needs to happen, that's what's gonna happen. I don't have a say in that. And I also don't have a say in what type of discipline or consequence that he chooses. Uh, it's up to him. Whatever he decides is appropriate. My husband is really good at making the consequence fit the crime. He is very fair. He's not overly strict. Um, he's actually pretty lenient. I'm pretty spoiled. I get pretty much what I want all the time. Um, he knows that. So he has a very good way of balancing being strict but also being very loving. Like he is the most loving person you'll ever meet. I know one of the questions that I get a lot is, how is this fair? You have consequences. What are his consequences? What are his rules? And I mean, I guess if you want to look at it that way, it's true. But what in life is 100% fair? Nothing really is. Nothing. And if you really think about it, I have it easier. If I do something... There's a consequence and everything is forgiven. I start with a clean slate and we move on. If something happens and he messes up in some type of way, he doesn't have that option. He has to deal with whatever he did and whatever comes along with that. And to me, personally, I think I have it, I have it better. Just that's how I look at it. Now, for the times that I don't necessarily agree with him, I try to look at it like, well, there are probably plenty of times I have done stuff, broken rules, or gotten away with things that I shouldn't have, so it kind of just evens out. Like, that's how I look at it. That works for me. In my mind, it makes sense. So, it leads me to not be, um, I don't feel any type of regret about being in this lifestyle. And I don't feel any type of harsh feelings towards him because, like I said, I feel like it evens itself out. He is really good, though, at listening to me when I feel like I really haven't done something. Because there are certain instances where you can't help but break a rule. Like, it really is. If you are driving and somebody cuts you off and you have to go...
a curse word might come out. I mean, it would for anybody. So there are instances where I think stuff can be forgiven and he knows that. So he's very good at hearing me out. There's no way that I'm going to be able to really go over everything or explain everything in this video, but we are so open to questions. If you want to know how we do things, if you want to learn how to do this yourself, just curiosity, whatever, leave us questions, subscribe, hang out with us, chat, you can email us. We will be happy to answer anything and do our best to explain. Remember, we are explaining from our point of view. That is all. This is a not one size fits all thing. So we can only give you from what we know and what we have experienced. And everybody's experiences are different. I'm also an avid couponer. I love a good deal, especially free. I will let you know when you can get them, what you need. I will let you know everything. I will let you in on all my little tips and tricks. I will show you my coupon stock out. Also like to make stuff. So we will have little DIY projects from here and there, especially with the kids. And since they're at home school, it's a good way to keep busy since they are here all the time. All the time. Think about that before you decide to go to school. I never get a break. But anyway. What else we will do is we will take you with us on family trips and family adventures. We are new to Ohio, so everything's an adventure here for us. We will take you where we go to new restaurants, we will find new stores. Anything that we do, you all can join us. We will also be very happy to do videos by request. If there's things you want to see or topics you want us to talk about, we're open. Just Hit us up and let us know and we'll be happy to do it. Our main goal for our channel is to invite you into our lives, let you see how we do things and get to know us. We hope you hang around and join us in this adventure, which is our life. Please make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification button to make sure you don't miss out on any videos. Bye.